Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And it's the 28th of March 2024 while I'm recording this video. And yes, I'm sporting my Panama hat. It will become clear throughout this video why I am sporting this Panama hat. But anyway, there is uh, something very important that I want to talk about um, today. Now, before I actually get started, in the next episode, um, I'm going to be, uh, you're going to see me having a chat with Ant in Suley, who you know from Discerning Consciousness. Last time I went to England and I met him and we had a, a bang in the world to write session. Well, we had a Skype conversation. Uh, at time of recording, we had a Skype conversation a couple of days ago. So. Um, so that's uh, coming up next and we just bang the world to rights for about an hour or so and um, bring up some interesting topics, especially like in the light of things that have happened um, recently. Now today, um, what I would like to talk about is um, a phrase actually Ant come up with himself and that is the truth of trap, um, which is basically uh, people get really carried away with conspiracy theories and then they can't stop and everything therefore has to be a conspiracy theory all the bloody time and um, you know they don't really search for evidence they just go along with everything that they hear and I know that I said right that I wanted to completely wrap up the whole Kate Middleton stuff in the last three videos I'm not going to make this video about her you know primarily but there's just a few bits that I need to mop up just to be really clear about a lot of things now yes we were given the run around with all those um, fake or doubtful pictures of her while they were dithering trying to work out how they were going to release the truth to the public about um, Kate and um, what turned out to be her cancer. And we know that we were messed around with a few photos that looked somewhat dubious and looked suspiciously unlike her. Or at least they did look like they, under forensic examination, which I've done a couple of uh, videos ago, did actually show evidence of possible foul play right but the trouble is um, now I have taken the complete 180 degree view when it comes to that latest video that she uh, that she uh, put out I have no doubt to believe that is real and if you ask me what are the conclusions that I've come to well basically after dithering for a while and trying to use basic subterfuge should I say to try to um, you know quell the public I think a bumbling PR company at Kensington Palace um, made some terrible blunders terrible mistakes and as a result of that they did get people to speculate and as a result of the speculation it created a few conspiracy theories that otherwise wouldn't be created and as a result of that um, Kate herself was therefore compelled to come out and put all this to rest and so as a result, she come out, sat on a bench and told us what was going down. And to be honest, I then decided, well, you know, for me, case closed. And that's what I said in the last video, and I still stand by that to this day. However, people are still trying to say that this video is fake. And so I'm just going to um, just start off by debunking all of this stuff, right? There's this clip of her with a disappearing ring and I've seen that video but the version that I downloaded from YouTube funnily enough the ring doesn't disappear and you know what I managed to do I managed to get the version with the disappearing ring and the version from my version and put them side by side so that you can see first I'm going to um, show you the clips side by side so that you can see them they're slowed down to about 20 five percent of their original speed so Kate's voice is very slow and a bit matrixy sounding so uh, check out this moving image first I'm going to play it twice first look at it on the left on your left which is the one where the ring doesn't disappear then look at it on your right where it does disappear as I've said to them I um, well... As I've said to them, I am well. Now, in case it was going too fast and you didn't see it, I decided that I would actually take a screenshot where there was a clear part of it where the ring looked like it was missing on one um, picture and not missing on the other. I'm going to show you that now. Uh, 
And you know what the conclusion I've come to? If someone created a low resolution version of that video, and they probably used a basic photo app to be able to uh, touch up the area around her ring and look like it disappeared. The artifacts that I can see on the area where her ring looks like it disappeared does actually look like a photo touch-up job. And the conclusion therefore I've come to is that there are certain what I would call double agents out there um, who are deliberately spreading false or misinformation to create fake conspiracy theories that are not real in order to get gullible, stupid, low IQ, highly reactive truthers to spread and spread and spread and spread and spread misinformation. Now, I think this is a deliberate ploy, a double agent ploy, shall we say, a kind of like 4D chess game, because if enough people do this, then they can blame the truthers for it rather than blame uh, whoever is responsible for creating this misinformation in the first place, rather than getting to the source. And um, this is one of the reasons why I think people need to learn how to be discerning. Don't take anything on face value. Do your own research. I mean, God, even fucking David Icke told everyone to do that. You'll have to excuse all the noises behind me, incidentally. Someone's going by on a motorbike. Uh, and it's just suddenly got very noisy in this corner. Anyway, one more saying, yeah. So, this is the thing that they've been saying all along. Don't take my word for it. Do your own research. But no one does. What they do is they just see something, freak out about it, share it. But what they don't do is do their own research. What they don't do is actually check different sources, put them all together and see if they can find discrepancies. Now this is exactly what I've done and the conclusion that I've come to is that there are some people out there who are deliberately spreading false conspiracy theories, right? And they're doing this deliberately, I personally think, in order to, um, you know, because the mainstream narratives and, you know, there are plenty of conspiracies that have turned out to be true, and we know that. The levels of gaslighting that are going on at the moment are very multi-pronged. So, as I had um, shown you, um, I think it was a couple of years ago now, that bloke from Pfizer, who said uh, in that clip, you remember the one that I showed you, where he said uh, we'll re reduce the population by 50%, and it turned out that there was a jump cut, um, but he was um, very still during that bit. He was like that, and then he, you know, and it was edited, right? So you couldn't see the jump cut, but he actually really said that we're going to um, reduce the population who can't afford our medicines by 50%, which, of course, entirely changes the meaning of it, right? But people still spread that about. So there you go. There's evidence that I've shown you that Kate's ring didn't disappear in the version that I got from, which is a high resolution copy, and um, someone else had either got a low resolution copy and the artifacts just made the ring disappear, or possibly someone got a couple of those frames and deliberately drew it out and then released it, and somehow the Daily Mail got hold of it and um, showed it to everyone. So, you know, this is the thing. I honestly think that there are double agents out there creating exaggerated fake conspiracies for the purposes of creating the disinformation that then, as a result, you know, problem reaction solution maybe. They can say, look at all this disinformation. We have to regulate the internet. We have to censor people. We have to do this. We have to do that. Right? And then, of course, new laws are being brought in. But I've decided now that some of the more guilty parties out there are the blindly reactive conspiracy truther people who don't do their homework. They're not helping the situation at all, right? That's the conclusion I come to. I think that you can, as you can't take anything on face value, we shouldn't have confirmation bias towards a tribe. We shouldn't have, um, you know, we shouldn't just be singing from the same hymn sheet. We should be checking everything, verifying everything. And who cares if it makes us any more or less popular, you know, really amongst the peers, right? Basically, if your peer group ain't bright enough, change your peer group. That's what I say. Right? Or try to be confident enough to raise the game and maybe you command respect and people think, all right, well, Niall's raising his game, I think I'll raise mine, you know? And you might get some abuse from a few troll idiots along the way there too, right? But that wasn't the only one. The other one, of course, oh, there's two more actually, right? One was a picture of her, I think this is a video of her, this is a photo still of Kate, seven years earlier in a video that was called Heads Together that she had done with, uh, with William and Harry. But this is her wearing that stripy jumper seven years earlier. And this is the picture of her sitting on the park bench making the announcement, apparently wearing the same jumper. And as a result, does that mean it's AI? Well, I shall just do something here now. I'm gonna just position the camera right so that I can do this right. This is me 
wearing my Panama hat now, and this is me 10 years ago in India wearing the same Panama hat. Yes, I know, time's been quite good to me over the last 10 years, but the point is that I'm, these coconut trees not in India, I'm not um, uh, an AI aged version of myself from 10 years ago, right? That's what I mean. Uh, you know, I mean, all right, I know they're expected to never wear the same clothes once, never mind twice, because they're royals or whatever, and they're posh, but the Queen had a lot of outfits that she'd wear from time to time because she was not overly extravagant. What's to say that um, Kate likes that jumper, and likes to wear it on the odd occasion, what, what's to say that she thought, oh, I want to get another one of them, and it, maybe that's what it is. The other issue that I want to point out, and I want to debunk as well, is that people were saying that it was AI because a bit of Kate's arm looked like it had been double exposed onto the bench. Now, as I've mentioned this, I think I mentioned this before, or did I? No, I didn't actually mention this before. I had a conversation with Ant about this, and you'll see this next week. Polyurethane varnish, right, on a highly polished surface of wood, well, that's what I see when I look at that corner where Kate is just basically reflecting her jumper onto that bench. That's all I see there, right? Now, here's me earlier in my scruffy bright green t-shirt standing against a highly varnished door and you can see my reflection in the wood. There you go. I didn't need any AI. And, and I think I was real during the time as well. So <laughs> I just thought I'd point out to you as well. Yes, basically, I think that one of the problems that we have at the moment is not just um, it's not just to do with uh, you know um, case. It's to do with the general conspiracy sphere. I'm a bit concerned, right, that it has gone just it's really gone off track at this point, right? Um, whatever is going on, you have to make sure, and it has to get into the narrative, and people have to understand that a lot of the things that appear online might be deliberate. It might be double agents. It might be people out there that want to create false or exaggerated evidence of conspiracies in order to make you think certain things. So that if you're just going to be gullible and reactive enough to spread those certain things, then what you will do is you'll become complicit in spreading misinformation. And then of course the government then comes along and says, yes, look at all that misinformation and disinformation out there. It's rampant. And even if their covert op people might be creating it themselves, it's a conspiracy a level above the conspiracy that everyone might see. Now, I don't know for sure. I am speculating. Maybe it's not. Maybe what's happened is that this is just a, a low resolution copy and a, a natural artifact of that low resolution copy made her ring disappear. I don't know. But I honestly think that people are creating false um, evidence spreading it out so that people can keep milking these conspiracies that are going around like this and um, I think this is I think this is terrible I think that you know this is a sign that the West is becoming really stupid there's an overabundance of information and that's all that there is there aren't enough people verifying this information there are not enough people forensicating it there are not enough people questioning you know their whole attitude is, you know, it's only the mainstream that does this, it's not us, we don't do fake things, and then they usually end it with wake up sheeple, right? The problem with the conspiracy thing is, yeah, you start with something that's very plausible, and in a lot of cases, especially in the time of COVID, and especially in the time of, you know, how could I say, those tests, the, the tea, the drinking, and I know I regret it, uh, drinking the tea myself. So far, I'm still all right though, but you know, we'll see. Well, it turned out that some conspiracies turned out to be true, right? Granted, some conspiracies turned out to be true. And it turned out that, um, you know, a lot of, uh, I was going to say, authoritarian experimentation went on as the powers that be tried to actually erode a lot of our freedoms. And they succeeded in a lot of things. And there was big pushback against all of this. There's been the World Economic Forum, there's been the... Um, there's the green stuff, which of course I don't believe entirely, no. I think that the, 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 um, the so-called scientific position that they come by is quite dubious. I think uh, there's some real shit going on here. There, there does appear to be like um, a lot of conspiracies here that have come out and turned out to be true. But the problem is, right, if you go too far down the rabbit hole and you're not really using your intelligence, you eat into their hands because I think there's another level of conspiracy here that we have to look out for and that is that yes I would doubt the mainstream I would question the mainstream I'd question authority all the time when it comes to a lot of this stuff because I don't believe them
But at the same time, I also know that a lot of the um, information related to conspiracy-related things are also really grossly exaggerated. And some are made up and some are false. And there is the possibility that some of these, uh, some of these you know, anomalies have actually been artificially manufactured by someone who wants to uh, darken or blacken the reputation of the truth movement. And so they spread out. So there's probably double agents doing that too. Yeah, basically, the conspiracy people are falling for a conspiracy that they themselves don't know about, right? And, and, and they, in their hubris, they think they're so awake, they think they're so enlightened, and they think everyone else is sheep, or they couldn't possibly fall for that, could they? No, because a lot of people actually do think like that, and that's a problem too, right? But you have to realise we don't know. A lot of the time we don't know. And a lot of times we have to actually be brave enough to say, well, in this case, I think it was true. I don't think that this was a conspiracy. I do not think this is fake. There is no way of 100% knowing to be, you know, to be absolutely sure in this digital age with manipulation, AI and all the rest of it. You just don't know. But at the same time, I don't see any evidence with my own eyes really, or upon you know, closer examination, looking at all those anomalies. This time, I don't see any evidence that these people are correct. And I do see evidence that it's been tinkered with by people who are spreading out falsehoods. And so, you know, I flip-flopped over the last four videos on this. I still think that the photos that were, you know, being deliberately leaked out while, they, while she was hiding away for three months uh, were not real. I think that there was, something was definitely going on there and I think that it was just some sign. But I, again, I don't think this was a conspiracy. I don't think it was malevolent in the same way that sort of like certain wars that have been manufactured are, are being malevolent or in the way that kind of like the, how can I say, the, the demographic change or the, the, um, the Lurgy era. There was some malevolent stuff going on there. I don't actually think this was malevolent at all. I think that they were just freaking out, faffing around, dithering, thinking, oh shit, what are we going to do? Didn't know, their PR team didn't know what to do. They were completely tone deaf to what the public wanted and they just created some subterfuge. But in the end, they had to come out and tell the truth and then that's what I think they did. <laughs> Sometimes it goes like that, doesn't it? Right. So all I want to just say, you know, you know I, think, I, I think from what I can tell, that my audience are intelligent and smart enough, you know, but this is the sort of conversation I honestly do think that we need to have. The whole truth of sphere really has, you know, we've got to set standards here. We've got to set standards and we've got to go around telling these people that, you know, just be careful what you believe. And be careful what you believe, you might be wrong. Now, if they get angry with you, fuck them. If they want to start freaking out and calling you sheeple and they want to start getting aggressive and trolling you and personally attacking you rather than, you know, having sound arguments with you, then Fuck them, right? But we should definitely, definitely not believe everything that we see that comes from the conspiracy sphere any more than what we should believe comes from the mainstream. And I couldn't, I can't possibly stress this enough, right? Because you know, this is now going into flat earth territory as far as I can see. And I think that's a phrase that we should use, right? Have we, have the conspiracy theories gone from being plausible? Because a lot of them are, and a lot of them have turned out to be true. And the Lurgy era has shown us that, right? Definitely without the shadow of a doubt. But, you know, are they becoming more and more implausible? And do they cross the threshold and then go to, into flat earth territory? Because that's what I think has happened now in uh, relation to Kate. And also, there's one thing that I do often wonder about. Have you noticed, and me and Ant are gonna be talking about this in the next video that I set out, right? Why is it? that a lot of people who have gone so far down the rabbit holes of the, the conspiracy world become Christian recently, you know? I've noticed that. Quite a few of them have all become Christian. Now, 10 years ago, they would have said it was mind control, and now they're all becoming Christian, you know? Now, with me, right, I'm, uh, I'm not going to become a member of any religion, you know? I'm interested in the, um, what let's say, I'm interested in some of the tenets of Christianity, you know, you know like, um, Occasionally, every now and then, maybe a couple, every couple of years or so, I might re-watch that Jesus of Nazareth movie, the six hour thing, you know. Because um, if you look at it from more nuanced eyes, bigger picture eyes, um, it, it kind of brings the whole story into sharp focus. And if you look at it with an agnostic perspective, like I do, right? Well, 
a lot of it makes sense and what it taught me that like um, there was this character called Jesus but and everyone else were more like the Pharisees and they were like the Christians and even to this day more like the Pharisees than like the Christians. So I don't think these people actually live by it. Now I know a lot of people out there have said right um, that uh, that you know because of the death of religion or the death of God as Nietzsche called it that maybe um, they see the threat of another religion coming in and maybe they see a God-shaped hole caused by the Wokies and all of that. And so as a result, they feel that they need to uh, fill the void. And so maybe that's why they've all become Christian, because they associate that with the glue that holds society together. Now, here in the Philippines, that's quite evident. You know, it's a very Catholic country. Um, you know, the thing about it is that I'd be in the shop the other day, I was in the shop, and then of course, I think uh, at six o'clock in the evening, they play a recording of a prayer or something, and then before you know it, I'm standing in the queue and everyone's slipping, crossing themselves like that. And I mean, I had to, you know, keep quiet and not, not, not voice my opinion too loudly. But it, does, it reminds me a little bit of my Irish relatives, though. That's the thing. That's, that's what it comes down to. But, but I mean, the thing is, it's so embedded and it's so endemic in the culture here, right? That's the thing, that it doesn't really come across as a cult. It does come across as a glue that holds together the fabric of society and keeps this place quite traditional, and it does keep this place quite stable. And fair enough, I understand that. But the trouble is, I don't think a Christian revival is going to quite do the same thing now. Because if they're, you know, in the Western world, because I kind of think that all the, if the conspiracy people are becoming Christian, right, what's going to happen is they're just going to become a fringe cult, right? It's not going to take the whole of society in. If there's going to be a way of the whole of the Western world being able to get together and get a common consensus, um, there has to be another way. Now maybe, you know, maybe traditionalism or even cultural or nominal Christianity can play a role in that. But the thing is, they do remind me of the evangelicals when I hear them talking. They do remind me of the sort of God botherers. And if you were to go back a certain amount of time and tell people that in the future, the people in the fringes of society would become more right wing and become Christian, right? The people in the early 90s would be looking at you and thinking, what? <laughs> they'd, be, they'd be laughing, it'd be complete disbelief, right? So, I don't know, all I, all I know is, right, people can just work out that shit for themselves. But I am wondering, why are so many people suddenly turning to, um, to the Bible and Jesus and Christianity like that? It doesn't seem right to me. It's, I don't know. It's like, in their attempts to become an alternative outside of the mainstream, you know, in their attempts to think of themselves as people being outside of the matrix, they're becoming gatekeepers of a second order. And I'm always on the lookout for that because I'm such a rebel, me, you know me. I'm such a flipping rebel. I don't want to become part of any of that stuff myself. I just want to be, um, you know, I want to try and act with common decency, maybe um, go by the sort of the moral framework of that, but not take it too literally, not adopt it as a, you know, the, as a full religion. But, you know, just let's say when it comes to the religions, you can look at them and you can find a few things that are tenets of common decency and morality that you can live by. But, you know, I just sort of think in this time that we're in at the moment, we, we have to find another way. Maybe we need to go to Nietzsche. Maybe we need to aim to become Ubermensch. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, I hope that was, uh, I hope this has uh, given you a lot to think about today. And now, of course, I'm a heretic to some people and I'm probably going to ruffle a few feathers, but hey, that's all part of the fun. So, see you later, alligator. See you soon. Baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, check out all our social media links. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.